Welcome to Blade of Tech Musings, the channel dedicated to retro tech, innovation, science, and technological entertainment. Just over two months after NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley lifted from the Kennedy Space Center's historic Launch Complex 39A into SpaceX Dragon 2 atop a Falcon 9 rocket, the Demo 2 crew disembarked from the International Space Station on August 1, 2020. The August 2nd splashdown of the Dragon 2 capsule will mark the end of the first American manned mission since 2011. The mission represents a huge success for NASA's commercial crew program, which provided funding and guided the developments involving the Dragon capsule. NASA is further expected to certify the craft to regularly carry humans to and from the ISS, starting with the Crew-1 mission tentatively scheduled for late September 2020. The Demo-2 spacecraft was commanded by Marine Colonel Douglas G. Hurley. Hurley was the pilot of the space shuttle Atlantis on its final flight, STS-135, which turned out to be the final flight for any space shuttle. The entire shuttle fleet was decommissioned shortly thereafter. Air Force Colonel Robert Behnken was the Demo-2 Joint Operations Commander. He was responsible for Demo-2's interface with the ISS and returned to a co-pilot role while Hurley executed the re-entry of the Dragon 2 to Earth. Benkin was part of the crew of STS-123 on Space Shuttle Endeavour in 2008, and of STS-130, again on Endeavour, in 2010. Benkin and Hurley were two of four NASA astronauts selected in 2015 to train for commercial crew missions on SpaceX and Boeing capsules. The other two were ISS veteran Sunita Williams and shuttle veteran Eric Bowe. NASA assigned Benkin and Hurley to the SpaceX Demo-2 mission in 2018. Benkin and Hurley boarded the Dragon 2 and undocked at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Time, dropping into a lower orbit than the ISS in order to prepare for re-entry. The trunk section containing power modules was jettisoned at 1.51 p.m., where it will eventually burn up in Earth's atmosphere. The crew module began breaking at 1.56 p.m. and re-entered the Earth's atmosphere at 2.36 p.m. Parachutes were deployed at 2.44 p.m. and the splashdown occurred at 2.48 p.m. near Pensacola, Florida in the Gulf of Mexico. The Pensacola splashdown was necessary due to Tropical Storm Azaeus, proximity to Cape Canaveral. The pickup was by SpaceX's Go Navigator recovery vessel. Once the Dragon 2 was on the deck of Go Navigator, Hurley and Behnken disembarked the capsule and underwent medical checks. The two astronauts then flew on a helicopter to Naval Air Station Pensacola, where they boarded a NASA aircraft for the flight back to their home base in Houston. Many of the watchers of the return to Earth of the Demo-2 mission became aware for the first time that the Dragon 2's re-entry is more like an Apollo capsule from the 1970s than the space shuttle of the 2000s. The space shuttle looked somewhat like an airplane because it was essentially an unpowered glider which would descend through the atmosphere and gradually glide back to Earth, borne on wind currents. Re-entry for the Dragon 2 also differs somewhat from that of the Russian Soyuz MS spacecraft, upon which NASA has had to rely on to bring astronauts to and from the ISS while the commercial crew program labored to qualify a replacement for the shuttle. While the Dragon 2 is designed for a water landing, the Soyuz MS capsule parachutes directly into Kazakhstan a landlocked country that has historically hosted most of the Soviet Union and Russia's manned space flights. NASA has paid Roscosmos almost $4 billion for Soyuz seats since 2006 and has agreed to a $90 million contract with the Russians for a seat on a Soyuz capsule later in 2020 as a hedge against unexpected problems with the Dragon 2. NASA officials intend to end the cash payments to Russia once declaring the Dragon 2 and the Boeing Starliner spacecraft operational. The Demo-2 capsule came back to Earth with around 330 pounds of cargo, including frozen experiment specimens, personal gear, and a U.S. flag left on the space station by the STS crew of Shuttle Atlantis in 2011. The flag also flew on the Shuttle Columbia for the STS-1 initial shuttle mission in 1981. The final shuttle crew left it on the space station to be returned by the next astronauts to fly to the research lab on a U.S. spacecraft. In the end, it was SpaceX that beat out Boeing for the honor of retrieving the flag. Now that the Demo-2 crew of Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken will have put the Dragon through its paces, the prospect of regular crew admissions to the ISS is just on the horizon. The Dragon-2 already made one successful flight, dubbed Demo-1, to the space station, but that was without a crew on board. The Demo-2 mission made it possible for astronauts to test out manual controls of the Dragon's flight systems, as well as the spacecraft's environmental control and life support system. 
NASA stresses that the Demo-2 is a test flight, so it isn't just the onboard systems that are under scrutiny. The mission is designed to test the vehicle, land it safely, and prepare it to regularly launch crew. To that end, there will be several weeks in between the Demo-2 flight and any subsequent launch. This will allow SpaceX and NASA to inspect and certify the Dragon 2 for operational missions. Assuming that the Demo-2 mission confirms that the capsule is to be certified, the next launch of the Dragon 2, dubbed Crew-1, should occur in late September or early October. That mission would see Dragon 2 serial number C-207 carry four astronauts to the space station for a six-month stay. On board will be three NASA astronauts, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, and Shannon Walker, who will be joined by Japanese astronaut Soichi Noguchi. Now that the Crew-1 mission was set into motion, NASA has also announced the slate of astronauts that will man the Crew-2 mission tentatively scheduled for a spring 2021 liftoff. NASA astronauts Shane Kimbrough and Megan McArthur will serve as spacecraft commander and pilot respectively for the mission. JAXA astronaut Akihito Hoshide and ESA astronaut Tomas Pesquet will join as mission specialists. The Demo-2 capsule, should it be certified after inspection, will be reused for the Crew-2 mission the first instance of reuse, other than the shuttle, of a spacecraft in U.S. manned space exploration history. Now that the Demo-2 mission is in the history books, what do you think of the Dragon 2's inaugural manned mission? Was SpaceX essential for NASA's return to manned space exploration, or was it better to wait for the Orion capsule? Let us know by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this 30th video short about space and tech on the BTM channel. If so, click that like button. Not a subscriber yet? Clicking the subscribe button and the bell notification icon will help both our YouTube standing and keep you informed when new episodes are released. Links to our previous episodes can be found below. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. Make sure you follow our Twitter account, where all new episodes are announced. And finally, join us on our Facebook page, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Dan. Yes, joining me in a studio here at NASA's Johnson Space Center is NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. Jim, thanks for joining us today. Another historic day for our agency, returning humans to Earth in a commercially built and operated spacecraft. How is this mission paving the way for the future? Well, it's a great question, and I, I think um, it's really establishing the business model for the future. So you can see today I'm wearing my Artemis shirt. Uh, and when we go to the moon, we're going to go with commercial partners. Um, and, and, you know, NASA's goal here, we don't want to purchase, own, and operate the hardware the way we used to. We want to be one customer of many customers in a very robust commercial marketplace in low Earth orbit. But we also so want like to have said, numerous providers a that are competing against period. each other on cost and innovation and safety uh, and really create this virtuous cycle of, of economic development and capability. And that's, um, that's what today's return is going to represent. This is the next era in human spaceflight where NASA gets to be the customer. Uh, we want to be a strong customer. We want to be a great partner, uh, but we don't want to be the only ones that are operating with humans in space. And while on board, Bob and Doug were, of course, conducting science experiments and spacewalks. And how are NASA's efforts on this station contributing to life back here on Earth? So when we think about the International Space Station, um, it really is focused on how do we do those transformational activities that benefit human life here on Earth. And uh, certainly, um, you know, when we think about advanced, uh, advanced materials, industrialized biomedicine, these are the things that we're developing every day. Some examples would include, as far as advanced materials, very, very thin materials like an artificial retina for the human eyeball, so somebody who has macular degeneration might not have to lose their eyesight in the future. Um, we can only create materials that thin in the microgravity of space. We cannot do it here in the gravity well of Earth. But that's just one of so many examples. When we think about how we compound pharmaceuticals, when we think about how we um, you know, create immunizations for things like salmonella um, and, and other diseases, um, the, these are capabilities 
that are available to us because of the resource that is microgravity. Um, but, it, you know, advanced materials, things like very pristine fiber optic cables, we call it ZBLAN, for example. These are all things that we think that there is a marketplace for the future. So look, right now we're doing commercial resupply of the International Space Station. As of today, uh, when Bob and Doug come home safely, we will be doing commercial crew to the International Space Station. The next big thing is we need commercial space stations themselves. And in order to create the market for commercial space stations, we have to have these transformational capabilities that come from the microgravity environment. And that's really what we're developing right now. And as you know, a big day for NASA today, but how about a big week? This week alone, we launched Mars 2020. Artemis One's launch vehicle stage adapter was delivered to Kennedy Space Center. And here we are completing the first commercial, commercially crewed mission to the International Space Station. What are your thoughts on the state of the agency at this point? So make no mistake, uh, NASA's budget right now is the highest it's ever been in nominal dollars. Um, and, and it's at you know, $22 billion. The budget request that President Trump gave us that is before the House and the Senate right now is $25.2 billion. It's not just about sustaining you know, capabilities like commercial crew, commercial resupply, the International Space Station. It's also about developing new capabilities so that the United States of America can stay the preeminent spacefaring nation. It's why we created the Artemis program to go to the moon sustainably with commercial partners and international partners to use the resources of, of the moon to live and work for long periods of time and then take all of that knowledge onto Mars. And of course, as you mentioned on Thursday, you know, we launched uh, the, you know, another Mars mission, the most sophisticated robot that NASA has ever developed is right now on its way to Mars. And we're going to prove that we can turn the carbon dioxide atmosphere of Mars into pure oxygen for life support. But there's so many other things. We're looking for life on another world. We're looking for signs of ancient life um, on Mars. Um, we're talking about microbial life, but life nonetheless. And um, this, is, this is really a, a bright moment for NASA. I want to be clear, though. Um, we need support from our members of Congress in both the House and the Senate. Uh, we, we need to be able to get that $25.2 billion budget that we have requested. Um, and so I'm working with members of Congress and senators on both sides of the aisle every day, uh, doing town halls across the country. We are in great shape. Uh, but in order to stay number one in the world, uh, we're going to need we're going to need the resources that, that, that the president has requested. Jim, thanks for joining us today. Such an exciting day. And in case you missed it just moments ago, both SpaceX and NASA are both a go for deorbit burn. So with that, we'll send it back to Dan and Kate at Hawthorne for the latest.